Hey, you're watching The Entrepreneur Journey, the site that's all about motivating you to step out and pursue your dream and do what you love. This week we come to you from Sydney, Australia, and I get to introduce you to an actor who's based here, Miss Clementine Mills. Mr. Goldman, I was just wondering if Mrs. Goldman was around at all, please. How did you find me? Mr. and Mrs. David Goldman, 63 Byron Avenue. You're married? Please, please, calm down. Look, you've got to be quiet. What? Is she in there? Yes. Jenny, please. Clementine, thank you so much for taking time out to spend with us. No, you're welcome. It's really lovely to, to be here chatting with you. Thanks for flying down. No, you're welcome. The show is all about just introducing you to down-to-earth, ordinary people who have gone out and, and done extraordinary things through pursuing that passion. And so we're going to jump right in and listen to Clementine's story. Let's just start off with, with some of your childhood. Yeah, great. So I'm originally from England. You might pick that up from my sort of <laughs> hybrid mess of an accent. Um, so I lived in England until I was 13 when my family and I emigrated to New Zealand. And then when I was 18, I emigrated to Sydney by myself. So sort of had quite a nomadic upbringing, um, been lucky enough to um, experience lots of different cultures and different people's approaches to life. And I, I definitely consider having three, three different homes, you know, wow. um, England, New Zealand and, and Sydney, that I have a, a real correlation with all of them. And mm -hmm. yeah, I feel very lucky to have been able to experience growing up in different places. Yeah. yeah. Now tell our viewers, how would you describe yourself professionally in terms of what you're doing? At the moment, I guess I'm an actor in the really early stages of my career and just sort of navigating the industry, navigating mm -hmm. the craft and really enjoying it, having lots of fun. It's very exciting. It's hard, but it's, it's rewarding and it's challenging and yeah. it's great. No, and Clementine's been able to, to perform on, on some really neat shows. Can you share with some of our viewers some of the performances and shows yeah, you've been a part of? absolutely, absolutely. So I graduated drama school. I went to Actors Centre Australia and I graduated in 2012. So since then I've just been finding my own work and I have, I'm really excited to be stepping onto the STC stage in to, uh, June, so sort of mid-June. So with Sydney Theatre Company, I've got a lead role in the production of Emrock. Oh, wow. So it's a brand new Australian play um, by wonderful writer Lachlan Philpot, and it's just really fun and quirky and, and out there, and wow. it's, it's unlike anything I've read before, so I'm really excited and That's really um, exciting. working with some really great people. Um, feel very... Um, very honored to be working with the people that I am and really yeah. looking forward to that. So we've recently been doing some developments on that and getting really, uh, really excited about that. So that's sort of what I'm focusing on at the moment. I also have just been enjoying the, um, I guess, fruits of the labor of, of the work that we did last year. I shot an indie feature film called Zoe Misplaced, okay. um, which is uh, has just had its premiere at the Mardi Gras Film Festival. So it was um, it's a, it's a film I'm really really proud of, and yeah. it was a a bit of a success story because it it started off as uh, a project that it was entirely funded initially by the director Mikel Mills, who's a wonderful. Um, originally Newcastle based okay. um, young writer director mm -hmm. and it's her first feature film and she just really wanted to get it done and she's really of the school of thought of just you know just get out there and do it mm -hmm. you know there's, there's, there's always going to be a million people telling you that you can't do something or that you there's a particular way or that there's a there's a particular trajectory that you have to follow but just it's about just not listening to that wow that's, you know? that's a great piece of philosophy and advice for life and is that something that you've sort of modeled 
your life after it all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think initially, um, you know, when you're younger, I think you're a lot more susceptible to conformity. You're a lot more susceptible to being sort of spoon-fed or prescribed how to do things. Okay. And but as I've as I've gotten older, and also I think with the, the the career path that I've chosen, you just you just learn that, that there is no set equation for success or for yeah. um, growth or development. It's all so unique, and yeah, you can't take any you can't take anything any one thing that anyone says is scripture. You know, it's just about taking what works for you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really neat, and I think that's going to hit home for a lot of people that there isn't this one elixir for success and that no. you've kind of got to step out and really find your own you got to find it yourself, yeah. yeah. Now let's start connecting the dots. How did you, with these incredible performances that you're involved in, how did you get to this place from, from all that moving around in your childhood? I, yeah, so when I was 18, I, well actually so when, a bit earlier than that, so 17, I uh, had finished school and I had decided to take a gap year mm -hmm. and I was pretty sure that acting was the the path I wanted to pursue. It's yeah. always been something that has um, interested me throughout my life. I've always done theatre since I was little and yeah. it's just it's just one of those things that I like. Um, I'm, I've always been a really creative person, always pretty much entirely right brain and anything left brain, anything remotely sporty, just don't ask me, I'm just rubbish. So things like that, you know, it's just, it, it was an obvious, it was sort of a no-brainer for me mm -hmm. that that was where I wanted to go. Um, so, you know, it's not any of that, like I knew from birth that I was going to be an actor, you know, <laughs> yeah. something like that. It's just, I just, I just, it was just an inherent feeling that's where I wanted to go. And okay. um, as I got older and I um, started finding my own acting work and mm -hmm. and really just sort of cemented for me that that's what I wanted. Yeah, there's a big debate I guess going around at the moment about the whole talent versus hard work. So talk to us about that in yeah, your right. life, like how, how much of it did you know you were just gifted and talented and how much of it was more if I'm, I like doing this and I know if I work hard enough, I'll reach where I want to be. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I mean, you you do have to have both, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Although, if you're really, really clever, you can kind of get off with being... I mean, a lot of, and a lot of, a lot of actors do, you know, um, a lot of actors who get work mm -hmm. aren't the most talented actors necessarily. They're mm -hmm. just really good at, at the pragmatic side of things. Okay. They're really good at the selling side of things, which is admirable in itself. You know, that's a skill in itself. But okay. you know, then there's a lot of really, really talented actors who don't get the jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's that really um, it's a really fine precipice to tread, you know, it's you just you just have to you have to be good at both really, yeah. I think. That's really interesting. So what what would you say would be that complete package, what sets a successful actor and actress apart from from the rest? Um, I guess someone who... I think it has a huge amount of um, you as a person. Okay. I really do, because I think um, with so many actors, I come, I've come come across personally, it's like they introduce themselves as, hi, I'm an actor, that type uh -huh. of thing. It's like, okay, but who are you? Okay. Huh. You know, so it's, you have to, I think you just have to be really confident and comfortable within yourself yeah and then because that's so much of the tool that you're selling yeah that's really interesting that you said that because i think even with acting is I'd, I'd imagine from an outside perspective that you could get so absorbed into a role that you kind of lose who you are as a person and so you saying that you need to find yourself and be clear about absolutely. that is interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, because you, yeah, absolutely, because, yeah, it's very dangerous I think and it's also, I don't know, for me, 
that's not what acting is about, you know, that's therapy, that's not hmm. what acting is, acting <laughs> storytelling, it's not actually about you. That's so, yeah. I mean, obviously you draw from your own experiences as an actor, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's a good foundation, that's a good starting point, but you have to look after yourself first yeah. and foremost if you want to properly tell the stories because that's your job at the end of the day yeah your job isn't to to um exercise your demons mm -hmm. you're not getting paid to to um air your dirty laundry you're not getting paid to um you know promote yourself you're getting paid to, to play a role that tells a story that will hopefully help people or entertain people I think it's just about, yeah, just about going back to why you're doing it. Why are you, why do you want to be an actor? Okay. That's something that I keep, you know, recalibrating with myself is why am I doing this? Is it because, is it for the right reasons? And for me, it's always about, yeah, just telling stories and helping people and making okay. people laugh or yeah. uh, challenging people's uh, belief systems, things like that. Mm. Yeah, un unpack that a little because I think that's really profound what you said is going back to why, the, the why question of, of doing anything. And so for you, when you boil it down, why do you want to be an actor, an actress? I think that there's a huge platform in films and theatre and TV to educate people okay. and to challenge people and to help people. I think, you know, um, there's huge potential in that and that's something that I want to be involved with. Yeah. If that if that's if that means that I could change something. I guess it's just about wanting to be a useful human being really yeah. Yeah, contribute something yeah. do, do you know what I mean and, yeah. and, and for me that's that's the the most um, natural inherent way to do it because that's something I'm just have always been inclined towards is performance and yeah that's how I can do it you know I also I, I'm an artist as well so I um, I can do it through that medium mm -hmm. um, you know some people find their outlet in I, you know, a, any other profession, yeah, it, it's applicable. It's the same thing. But for me, that's why I do it. No, that's a really, really neat principle that you've just talked about. That you said there are a lot of different outlets that we can, kind of in a sense, express ourselves and, and contribute. And you've you've been able to find that through the the vehicle of, of yeah. acting and, and art. Yeah. That's really neat. What would you say? Now you're you're right in the middle of your journey, which I think is, is an exciting thing for people watching this. What do you think has been one of the most difficult things for you in, in progressing and in, in just making validated progress, knowing that yeah. you are contributing? I think the hardest thing is probably that that progress is really hard to gauge. Okay. That it's not, there's not an immediate uh, gratification or satisfaction. And I don't mean that in a in a self-serving way, but it's just it's sure. really hard to gauge your progress. Sometimes you know mm -hmm. you'll go to a million castings or auditions, or you meet, read a million scripts, and you do all this work, and you're not actually sure necessarily where it's going. Yeah. And then sometimes the fruits of your labor will will present themselves, yeah. and that's amazing. But a lot of the time it can feel like you're just, you're just on the hamster wheel, you're just working, working, working. You don't know when that's going to manifest. Yeah. And no matter how hard you are as a worker, no matter how resilient, if, you, if you're not, if, if it's constantly um, exerting energy and you're not getting anything back, that can be really hard. But that, that, I mean, that, for example, is uh, exactly what was sort of happening with Zoe Misplaced, N not in a negative way. I mean, we, we all put a huge amount of effort into that. It was a passion project. It was a very small crew. Um, no one was paid. It was a $8,000 budget, which is pr for a feature film. Yeah. It's pretty much unheard of. Um, yeah. 
and you know we had some help with with crowdfunding and things like that but it was it was a tiny budget indie yeah. film and you know we all did it because we believed in the story and because it was something we all felt really passionate about and it was just a, a group of creative people who really just wanted to be put to work yeah and that was a really incredible thing to be a part of and it so happened that somebody uh, the the noticed that you know mm. uh, the director of queer screen um okay. paul he he actually approached Mikel, the director and said would you like to submit this to mardi gras film festival we'd love we'd love to have it in there mm. and so that ended up uh, from there it's been booked in um, melbourne queer film festival um, and now we're looking at our options internationally mm. and it got uh, the the Premiere in Sydney a couple of weeks ago sold out after about two weeks. I think it was it was one of the first in the in the film festival to sell out, hmm. and it got an overall rating of four point five stars. Okay, so incredible. it's really really um, exciting and yeah, flattering, and and you know I'm so proud of being a part of it. I'm so proud of Mikkel and everything that yeah. she did. And but, but you weren't yeah. able to see, just like you said, you you didn't see the outcome the fruits of of your labor when Until you were when you're working so yeah let's go back to you that was a great illustration you gave of the, the hamster on the wheel mm. uh, apart from that experience or even during that experience how did you push yourself to keep running on that hamster wheel um like it's it's just about finding that balance you know it it was a lot of just you have to just be resilient and steadfast and if I make a commitment to something I make a commitment to it yeah so if, if I if I'm on a project but I think is I'm really selective with my pro with the projects that I get involved with okay. so uh, I knew from the beginning that it was a project I had absolute faith in mm -hmm. and even though there were times where you know my patience was wavering or yeah. I was exhausted, you know, because I, I, we were all were, we were juggling, I mean, I was juggling two different ho um, hospitality jobs as well as filming up to sort of 10, 12 hours a day sometimes, wow. but unpaid, you know, um, working sometimes, you know, nine day weeks, wow. nine day weeks without a break, maybe you get a hard day off, half day off, yeah, and then you work another nine days and then... And it's it's literally you going from shift to shift. Yeah. Maybe you do some shooting, then you go you run to work, and you're late for work. But then, you know, you, there's all these things that you have to juggle. Yeah. But it uh, there's a strange liberation in it as well. It's because huh. at the end of the day, no one's making me doing this. Okay. Yeah. No one's making me do this. But um, it's something I want to. It's, it's something I chose for myself. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if there's something insightful already for me is this idea that you hit on about going back to your why because you talk about you know this running on a, on a hamster wheel and then being selective with a project and it sounds like what pushes you through and enables you to do all of this is is that foundation of the why is that correct yeah I think it's just that yeah it's definitely that and it's I can't imagine myself doing anything else hmm. okay you know? Yeah, that's really neat. Now, what would you say to people that that have aspirations, perhaps not only in in acting, in in art, but just in in general, for those that just feel bound and, and fearful of stepping out? What would you say to them? I guess something that has been said a million times before, but has always resonated with me, is the idea that what. What what's so bad about failure mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even try? Like, um, that I think the only thing worse than falling on your face would be not trying at all. Yeah. Because at least then, if you fall on your face and it 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 does it does get tipped up, you know. It, yeah. At least then you've given it a go yeah, and you've known. Sure. I mean, and the likelihood is that if you if you just go out there and you're resolute and you're um, you're committed to it. Yeah. There's no, there's not, literally nothing can stop you. You you, you are it's, you know it's been said a million times before, but you are the only thing that can stop you. Hmm. And there's there's enough people out there telling you you can't do things. Yeah. 
Yeah. So don't don't be one of those people. Don't right. add to that, Love especially in, in the acting world. You know, yeah. I so often I'm talking with my friends, actor friends, and things like that. And you say, oh no, I'm not right for that role. No, I can never be right for that role. There's so many people out there telling you you can't do a role. Don't don't <laughs> yeah, become don't your own critic. Right. Just yeah. just go for it. You never know. That's yeah. really neat. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now, can you share with, with our viewers perhaps your biggest highlight as you've journeyed? Has there been a moment where you just had to pinch yourself and say, is this really happening? Yeah, there's actually been quite a few, which is lovely. Um, yeah. I think the most recent one was definitely when we found out about Zoe misplaced because that's that's been something that's been really close to my heart for a long time. It's a story that I think is really important and needs to be told. And is yeah, just going back to that idea of putting so much work into something and n nothing might come of it, mm -hmm. but then that that small percent chance that it does that actually comes comes true. So I guess, yeah, when I found out, because I was in New Zealand at the at the time, mm -hmm. uh, it was at the end of last year that we found out. Yeah. And that was such a, like, uplifting moment. Yeah. That was a major win moment when I found out about that. Because, you know, it's, it's it, it was it was a beginning of something else. Uh -huh. So that, and, and, and when I found out that I got the STC role. Okay. That's huge, it. hugely yeah. exciting to. Um, I mean, I've been in Sydney for four years, and I only really have. Um, I, have a, I have a limited. Um, I sort of I knew no one here. Basically, when I moved, I knew one person in Sydney, wow. and just I guess building my network up from there, and having having the opportunity even to audition for something like that yeah. and then and then to get it to know that I'm going to be in the Sydney Theatre Company show that that was that's, that was very exciting. That's huge and, and really for, for anyone that's watched a few of these interviews that's something that's just so encouraging that everyone who has gone on to do neat things has done something that's really just been so far outside of their comfort zone and, and just like yourself coming over to Sydney by yourself not knowing anyone but just banking on this dream and then to hear you share your highlights I really hope that that, that hits home for a lot of people that are struggling to, to step out. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. There's three questions that, that I love to, to ask everyone that I sit down with. The first one, who's been the greatest influence in your life? Oh, so many people. Yeah. So many people. Um, my, my family is pretty incredible. Yeah. My family is amazing. I'm going to say my family is one person and she because yeah, they're amazing. I'm, my mum, my dad and my elder sister, so like a little unit. That's They've been amazing because you know we moved from our extended family and everything in England to New Zealand and it, you know your, your family just sort of distills. Yeah. So it's just, it was just the four of us. Uh -huh. And yeah, they've been They've been integral to to my to where I am now, and I, yeah. they're literally just the most supportive, yeah. loving, amazing family. And I, w I wouldn't be able to be where I am now without them. Like they ne they they just constantly supportive and never patronized me with a plan B. Mm. You know, a million other people. <laughs> felt the need to say, oh, what, what are you going to do if acting doesn't work out, or what are your other options? You know, which is all sound advice, and I understand, because yeah. people are more than more than ready to tell you how hard acting is, or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, it's not... I think they're trying to help, but it's actually often not helpful. But my parents never did that. They yeah. just said, look, if that's what you want to do, you know, we respect that choice, and... Right. Um, and we'll, we'll be here for you, whatever happens. Awesome. And I think I'm very, I'm very lucky to have a family like that because I know a lot of people who don't yeah. have that support. Yeah. I love what you said about not patronizing you with a plan B. That's, that's something to quote. That's great. <laughs> uh, the next question, I know, you know you're, you're still very young and you've got so much ahead of you, but 
looking back, what would you, what would you like to be remembered for? Um, it's a big question. <laughs> it's, it's a big question, I know. Um, I guess... That's a really big question. <laughs> I, I may have to change it for someone so early on in their career. I guess yeah. what... What would you like to achieve in, in this career? Okay. I would really love to challenge the stereotypes of women in the industry and, and the roles that we're allowed to play. Mm. Um, I really am interested in, yeah, just shaking that, um, the sort of categories that we put on things and yeah. I really want to be a strong woman in the industry and mm. and challenge I guess challenge the lens through which we're allowed to be viewed mm. you know because I mean in in Australia as a small blonde girl you if you're not a surfy or a Swedish backpacker, it's really hard to get roles, do you know what I mean? So you either have to w write your own work, or you have to work on your Swedish accent, you know? <laughs> it's like, funny. and that's ridiculous. How yeah. can, like, you know, I'm a human being, I've experienced lots of different things, how can I only play two different yeah. things? And and also, I think particularly as a, I mean, that's applicable to any kind of actor, you'd say, to, no matter what their appearance or age or whatever there's there's always you know very blinkered parameters of what yeah. you as a type can play uh -huh. and so I really want to shake that and I, I would love to get into directing and I write a bit as well so really play around with that and really give roles that would never be given to particular actors I really yeah. would like the idea of that I think particularly as a woman as well you know if you're either you're either the love interest or the antagonist, heinous woman who ruins everything. You know, you have very, such blinkered parameters and opportunities yeah. and so much less than men. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot to be done in terms of people taking feminism seriously across the board, but especially in, in the film industry. Wow. Sp specifically the film industry, you know. I was watching a really interesting interview with Olivia Wilde the other day and she sort of hit the nail on the head with the idea that they, they were talking about they did a, a flipped reading flipped gender reading of American Pie okay. um, and they had the women read the male roles and the men read the female roles and um, the men were really bored and, and uncomfortable and they said it's really boring being being a, a, a woman and she said yeah welcome to our world wow. you know that's there's there's so few really challenging, really um, strengthening female roles in, in ratio to the, to the ones for men. Yeah. And even the highest paying female actor isn't paid uh, even a percentage of the highest paid male actor. You know, it's just there's so many um, injustices that still exist that I, I, I guess that was a really long and rambly way of no. saying that I would really like to change that yeah. and to and to really break down those barriers and stereotypes of gender stereotypes and sexuality stereotypes and yeah I guess just even out the whole and yeah, I, I think you you just opened up a lot of eyes of people that you know I, I wasn't I think that was fascinating that example of American Pie and having the men read the women's roles and then and how profound and sort of game-changing that would have been, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm looking forward to seeing you shake things up, and I know a lot of people watching this will yeah. will also be cheering you on, but that's really neat. Thanks for opening mm -hmm. up and, and, and sharing that. But the last question, what is your definition of success? It's another big one. <laughs> it is. It's um, success is integrity and joy in what you do. 
I guess just success is not needing regret or not succumbing to it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, being, always being able to see the positives and being able to relinquish the negatives mm. and just just being thankful for, for what it is that you have and what you do. Yeah. I guess I guess that's what success is for me. Mm. You know, when I, I, I think of those moments where you stop and go, I'm, I'm really lucky to be living the life that I do. And I am, I'm in a number of ways, very, very lucky to be living the life that I do. It's a great privilege to be able to pursue what it is that I love. Mm -hmm. And I guess success to me is being able to be proud of the work that I've done and but at the same time looking forward to to growth yeah always always looking to growth okay. yeah wow that was a great answer and it's been so fun for, for me to sit here and chat with you you're, you're definitely a, a deep thinker and an <laughs> intriguing soul and, and I know the people watching are, are going to sense the same we're going to have all of uh, your contact details and your upcoming shows in the show notes. So be sure to check out the website if you're in, in Sydney or eventually visit Sydney. Get a hold of, of Clementine and, and check out her, some of her, her feature roles. It's going to be exciting to see what opens up in the future for you. But do you have any final words for, for people watching at all? Any last words of encouragement? I guess just... Um just follow your own trajectory, you know, that idea of going back to that, that idea that there's always going to be people out there who tell you, this is how you do something, this is what never to do, um, you can't do that, just don't listen to them, you know, that everything's so, in the time that someone is telling you, you can't do something, you could be out there beginning to do it. Mm. That's awesome. Like, it's really <laughs> that simple. Yeah. You know, there, there's been moments where... People have quite prescriptively said, you cannot make a, a feature film for under this amount of money, you know. And then there's Mikhail Mills, <laughs> uh, the director of Zoe Place, sitting there thinking, well, actually, you can because I did it. <laughs> it's in several film festivals and it's, it's, it's been done. Love it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess just, just um, always the positives over the negatives. There are so many avenues for negativity, just don't succumb to them and just to, just give it hell, I guess. Love it, love it. Simon Simon Mills, you've been awesome. Lovely, love lovely it. chatting with you. Thank yeah, you very thank much. Yeah, thank you so much. Go out and get it, guys. See you later.